created it by hand from mighty mountains to the raging sea to every leaf on every single tree it's in the holy book just open up and take a look Once there was a man named Jacob who lived in the land of Canaan with his 12 sons. The oldest was Reuben, then Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, Gad, Asher, Dan, and Naphtali. and finally, Benjamin and Joseph. They were Jacob's children by his second wife, Rachel. Being the youngest, they stayed at home while their brothers worked the pastures. Jacob loved all his sons, but Joseph was his favorite. Father, when can I tend the sheep with my brothers? I dreamed it would be any day now. Joseph, you and your dreams. <laughs> you start tomorrow, and to celebrate the big event, I have a surprise for you. Now that he's of age, Joseph will join his older brothers in the fields. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> and this will keep you warm. Oh, Father, it's beautiful. Hey, look at these sleeves and the colors. Father should have given you a coat like that, Reuben. You're the oldest. Huh in my dreams. Joseph's brothers were jealous of his gift. It reminded them that their father loved him most of all. But the beautiful coat wasn't the only thing that made them angry at Joseph. Judah, Asher, Simeon. The other night I had a wonderful dream. We were all in a field binding bundles of grain. And my bundle stood upright while yours gathered around mine and bowed down. Bowed down? To you? Huh? Father may worship you, but we don't. Hey, it was just a dream, Simeon. I'm going to bed. You know, last night I dreamed I was a star in the sky, along with 11 other stars. The sun and the moon were there too. And <laughs> they all bowed down to me. Eleven stars? You mean eleven brothers. And we're supposed to bow to you? Who do you think you are? A king? Ugh. If we're the stars, who are the moon and sun? His mother and I. Joseph, you don't think your family should actually worship you? Father, it was just a... Get to sleep. You and your brothers leave early in the morning. If you sleep late, they won't wait for you. Father's got that right. <laughs> and I don't want to hear anything more about dreams. <sighs> the next day, Joseph was left behind. Hello? Uh-oh. 
The dreamers found us. Get ready to bow, my brothers. Look at him, strut around like a peacock in his new coat. Sometimes I wish we could get rid of him. No, you don't. But I do. If he mentions one more dream, Simeon, he's our brother. We couldn't hurt him. But you've given me an idea. <sighs> what were you trying to do? Lose me? Joseph began to tell his brothers how smart he had been to find them, but they weren't listening. They had other plans. Hey, careful with the coat! Reuben! Judah, no! Ah! We'll keep him down there until we figure out what to do next. Reuben planned to free Joseph when no one was looking and sent him scurrying home. Oh, no! Reuben and Naphtali rounded up the flock while the others ate their supper. While they ate, a caravan approached. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if we sold Joseph to those merchants? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? We'd finally be rid of the pest and have money from the sale. Everyone agreed to the terrible plan. And Joseph was sold for 20 pieces of silver. Brothers, why are you doing this? God, whatever happens to me, I still have my faith in you. You did what to Joseph? Calm down, Reuben. I'll calm down when you figure out what we're going to tell Father. We have figured it out. We ripped Joseph's coat. We'll just make up some story. We looked everywhere for him, but only found his coat. Oh, Joseph. What has happened to you? My son. The brothers lied, and Jacob believed them. Joseph was taken to Egypt and accused of a crime. He hadn't done anything wrong, but he was thrown into the Pharaoh's prison anyway. Even in prison, Joseph trusted in God. God, I didn't do anything bad, but I'm in here for some reason. I know in my heart that it's all part of your plan. Joseph was right, and part of God's plan was to bless him with a special gift, the ability to understand other people's dreams. 
Oh, what a terrible night. If I only knew what my dream meant. Ah, my dream was four times as confusing as yours. I can tell you what it means. You understand my dreams? Ha! Not I. Only God can explain them. I believe you. Tell me about my dream. I was Pharaoh's cupbearer until I displeased him. In my dream, I saw a grapevine. On the vine were three branches with grapes. I squeezed them into Pharaoh's cup and put the cup in Pharaoh's hand. The three vines mean that in three days, Pharaoh will set you free and you'll be his cupbearer again. Thank you, Joseph. No, thank God, my friend. And when you're free, please tell Pharaoh about me. Tell him I shouldn't be in this awful place. I promise, I promise. Oh, enough about you, I'm next. In my dream, I had three baskets on my head. In the top basket were baked goods for Pharaoh. Suddenly, three birds came and ate everything out of the basket. What's that all about? In three days, you will also leave this prison. I knew it. I'm too important to stay here any longer. Wait, there's more. Everything you own will be taken away, and you will be given Pharaoh's harshest punishment. I'm sorry. Everything Joseph said came true, but the cupbearer forgot to tell Pharaoh about him. Joseph stayed in prison for two long years. Then one day, What a strange dream! Pharaoh met with the wisest men in his kingdom. Maybe they could understand his dream. But not one of them had an answer. Then the cupbearer remembered his promise to Joseph. Oh, Pharaoh, there is a very wise man in your prison who might explain your dream. Joseph, I dreamed that I was standing on the banks of the Nile when seven fat cows came out of the water. Then seven skinny cows came out of the river. And suddenly, the skinny cows ate the fat cows. <laughs> what does it mean? My God is telling you what he plans to do. The seven fat cows mean that there will be seven years with plenty of crops and food for everyone. But the seven skinny cows mean that after that, for seven years, no crops will grow and your people will have no food. Oh, this is horrible, terrible. No, Pharaoh. God has sent you this message so that you can prepare. Build barns to save some of the food that grows in the seven years of plenty. Your people will have plenty to eat. It is true. You are filled with the Spirit of God. This is the wisest man in my kingdom. We'll build these barns and save our food. And there is only one man who I trust to do such an important job, this man, Joseph. Joseph went right to work. And soon the barns were bursting with grain and filled with cattle. 
But Joseph's greatest achievement was that the people loved him. God had helped Joseph do these wonderful things, and Joseph never forgot to thank him. Seven years later, the terrible drought that Joseph had warned about arrived. No crops grew anywhere, not even in Joseph's old home, Canaan. We're out of food, Father. There's a wise leader in Egypt who has stored food for seven years. He's selling it to anyone who needs it. Then we'll go meet with him and buy his grain. Not Benjamin. I want him safe here with me. Joseph recognized his brothers. Bless you, great one. But they didn't recognize him, so he pretended to be a stranger. Where are you from? Canaan, great one, seeking food for our family. Your spies! No, we're brothers from a family of 12. Please believe me. Liar! There are only 10 of you. One brother was killed, and Benjamin, the youngest, was left at home. Hmm. I'll sell you my grain, but to prove that you are innocent and honest, bring this younger brother of yours the next time you come. I am going to keep one of you here until you return. Do you promise? We promise. God is punishing us for selling Joseph into slavery. He pleaded with us, and we betrayed him. <clears throat> I have no more time for you. Take your grain and go. And remember your promise. Father, we had no choice. Oh, Simeon, my son, a prisoner in Egypt. But look, Father, we got the grain. Hey, my money's here in the sack. Now we'll be accused of being thieves as well as spies. Jacob didn't want to lose another son to Egypt. So the family tried to save their food. But soon, it was all gone. We're leaving for Egypt. And we must take Benjamin. No, he'll wind up in prison like Simeon. We promised, Father. If Benjamin doesn't come, Simeon will stay in prison. And the Egyptian ruler won't sell us his grain. Benjamin will come home unharmed. I promise. If he doesn't, Judah, I'll die of sadness. Is your father well? Yes, sir. Good. God has blessed you. And you kept your promise, so I'll keep mine. <laughs> then the brothers left, but Joseph had told his servant to secretly place his silver cup in one of their sacks. 
Stop! Why do you repay good with evil? One of you has stolen my silver cup! Oh, I don't understand. Oh, no. For this crime, you will remain here in Egypt as my slave. Oh, I oh, no, 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 no. Please, if Benjamin doesn't return home with us, our father will die of grief. He stays. No, no! Take me instead! No, me. Please, Great One. When you threw me down that well, you meant it to be a bad thing. But in the end, God has turned it into something good. I came to Egypt and helped keep a nation from starving. It's me, Benjamin! Joseph! It's true, I'm Joseph. Oh, can't you tell it's me? Look closer and you'll see The eyes of your lost brother I am so glad to have my family gathered here It's so good to know you're near Gather your families and our father and come live with me in Egypt. Joseph, God be praised. You're alive and well. Joseph and his family were never apart again. And God, who helped them survive the famine, raised up a great nation from this family. So Joseph learned that even when bad things happen, God can turn them into something good. <laughs>